In this video, we are taking a look at these. The Nike Winflow number nine. runs Nike HQ, big fans of Nike on the channel, small, uh, but I want to know in the comments, firstly, have you ever tried the Windflow 9, and are you surprised like me that the Windflow has made it to the 9th edition, let me know, in the comments, now I like to, on this channel, um, vary the shoes that we review, we've got the super shoes that cost like 200 and something quid, and then we've got the bottom end of the range, we've got the Reeboks at 45 quid, and I always try to balance it out in terms of reviews. So I went along uh, and purchased myself the Winflow 9 at my own money, I picked it up for 85 pounds, which I'm probably gonna regret, and I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something I like to try and do on the channel. I like to try and vary what we've got, different price, price points, because I appreciate, you know, people have got not much money at the moment. Um, so I wanted to get the wind flow on, review it, let you know what it's like. So let's get stuck in. Okay, right, so where do we start? Let's do stats and features um, of this uh, new version of the Winflow. Firstly, they changed actually quite a bit on the shoe. We've got um, Nike Cushion Plus, I believe, uh, as the foam. It does say Cushion, yeah, it is Cushion Plus. It does say it somewhere. Um, we've got, instead of two air units now in the shoe, we've got like this full length, oh, I'll show you on the camera, full length um, air pocket. It's called, now where is it? Now there's not much information, but I wrote this down. Nike Dot Weld Air Unit. I may be getting that wrong. Uh, you may know more than me. Let me know in the comments. Uh, they've updated the uh, pull tabs um, around the, uh, sorry, the eyelets around the midfoot to create a much better lockdown. They've updated the upper and it's quite thick. Uh, so I don't think it's an improvement. Come on to that in a minute. The outsole is still very much um, Windflow, Pegasus feeling. Very good, very durable, uh, which is good news. Fits true to size, uh, plenty of foam and comfort around the heel. We're gonna weigh it up, hang on a sec. 300 grams, UK nine and a half. So that's 10.65 ounces. So it's not over the top in terms of weight, which I think is a good thing, uh, particularly at this price point. Uh, drop. I read nine mil, I'm not 100% sure it's a nine mil drop, but I've read a nine mil uh, drop. Toe box is quite shallow. That's the only thing I would say in terms of fit, so watch that. If you need a higher toe box, just watch that, but overall it does fit true to size, and I think that's probably about it in terms of stats and features. Now we've had the shoe a couple of weeks, uh, so we've got it up to, as a guess, about 30 miles, um, trying to wear as much as possible, um, but obviously we've got loads of shoes that we're trying all the time, but I try to get it up to about 30 miles at the moment, um, and okay, right, where do we start? So first things, uh, it's actually quite <sighs> soft, uh, the Cushlon with the, the full length air pocket, whatever it is, actually provides a, a relatively soft uh, ride than I was expecting. I was expecting a, a firmer ride because of the Cushlon. Uh, so it's definitely been softened up versus some of the other shoes out there. Um, and because it sort of sits under your foot, it, it provides plenty of, yeah, plenty of cushioning and, uh, and it's a very comfortable place to be, but only over the shorter miles. Because as soon as you start taking this a little bit further, it starts to get a little bit warm and a little bit, well, uncomfortable. Now I've enjoyed it on the sort of three mile runs uh, when I'm double run dying. That's where I've enjoyed it, it's been okay. Uh, again, looking at this from a price point, it's a relatively versatile shoe. The outsole's great on it, it's gonna last you ages. It's been great down the canal toe paths and the overall fit has been all right for me, but I say just watch that toe box. Um, but it, anything over the sort of three miles, four miles, it starts to get a bit warm and a little bit, I don't know, it loses that softness and that nice step in feel. And it becomes a little, you start to feel the ground a little bit too much. And it becomes, yeah, it, it just becomes a little bit rugged. So while the ride's not bad, um, if you're looking to do any sort of bigger work with the shoe, you may regret it. Don't forget, at 85 pounds, there's plenty of shoes, older models that you can pick up for the same sort of price. Um, 
if you're a Nike fan, you're probably going to, you know, uh, sorry, a Winflow fan, you're going to like the improvements. But if you're a Nike fan, you're probably going to pr uh, prefer the Pegasus 39, although different price points. I know. The only way I would recommend picking up the shoe is when it gets discounted. So if you can pick it up for 59, 60 quid and you want to do, maybe you're doing couch to 5K, starting out running, doing a bit of treadmill work, that kind of stuff, that's probably where this is going to come into its own. I wouldn't suggest the shoe if you're marathon training or half marathon training. If you're just getting out there and running, then this will do a job for you. Say, so great outsole, relatively comfortable. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just simplicity um, from Nike, where it is. Yeah, I think that's probably it. But I've got I've got to say something quite negative about the shoe. Eighty five pounds, still a lot of money, right? And the gluing on this and the quality of the shoe is 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 embarrassing, right? It is absolutely embarrassing. It really is. Now I'm I know I have a go at Nike on this channel. But it is so badly put together, this thing. It really does just look like it's been like thrown together and stuck with a load of glue. It's like something Daisy and Scarlet have put together downstairs with some Pritt stick. It's not the sort of thing that I would expect if I was paying £85. And that's the issue I have. It's a real shame because yeah, it, it just puts people off and it puts me off from buying these sort of middle price Nike shoes. It's so badly made... Uh, in terms of aesthetics, it's just it's just glue everywhere, and, and, and oh, I don't know. It just feels cheap. Does that make any sense? And and it's not. If this was forty quid, then you go, you know what? Fair play. But it's not right. So that's the thing with it. So okay, right. Just to conclude, so we're not going over the top here. Yes, it's better than the previous version. Yes, it will do your job if you're just uh, catch the five k, doing a couple of runs a week, maybe a bit of gym work. Don't pay 85 quid for it. Personally, I'd send you to the Pegasus 39 on a discount. And yeah, that's probably about as much as we need to say about the Windflow 9.